today. <laughs> dog, you're not, we're not letting you finish your Pop-Tart, dog. Welcome to episode 19 of the Off Work Podcast. Oh, yeah. Y'all, we almost 20 episodes in, dog. This has been an accomplishment. Come on. Every week, all right, fans and listeners, every week we deliver that content. Every mm. week, dog. Every week. Yep. That's the accomplishment. Other podcasts be taking weeks off, bro. Who? Who are we talking about? I mean, other podcasts in general, dog. But we won't take oh, no weeks right. off. We're just talking shit at this point. We'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was y'all's weekend, man? Good. Yo, before we start, shout out to Brando. Coming on last week, you know. Had a, heard a lot of good reviews, you know, a lot of people won the boy, won the boy Brando back, you know. We, we gonna, definitely gotta get him back, dog. We have to. We go we gonna bring him on next we're gonna bring him on next week for y'all, matter of fact. We we're we gonna bring him on next week for the for the fans, dog. Damn. All right. I'm we'll bring him that. back for the we'll bring him back for the fans. Drew, I, I watched that um what's that the show you recommended? The, uh, the Wizards show? Tales of Arcadia. Autumn, Autumn didn't like it, bro. Autumn wasn't rolling with it, dog. Too scary? She would like just she was watching it and then she stopped paying attention and she was like just she just got distracted, dog. It reminded me of like some like a kid's version of Game of Thrones. So I I'll, I'll roll with it. The the um the main like old lady is um Cersei from Game of Thrones. Like oh, for real? voice actor. Yeah. That's what it remind okay, I know it wasn't tripping, dog. It yeah. reminded me of some Game of Thrones. <laughs> No, it's the kids version. Y'all no, it's the annoying. kids version. Y'all are annoying. Shut up. Nobody cares about that. Okay. Our 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 fans don't care about that. How do you know? How do you know what our listeners care about? They don't care about Game of Thrones. I talk to them, man. Game of Thrones most popular. Don't don't don't. No, man, I'm, I'm in these streets, man. On social media with our fans, man. Nah, man. Have you, you ever watched Game, Game of Thrones, Jarrell? Huh? I never watched one episode. Yeah, the first one. It was trash. To me, I'm not. I'm not into the medieval, medieval stuff. I don't know how y'all like that. Y'all, y'all like dragons and stuff. Y'all, it's not old. about that. You're, you're, you're ignorant right now. You're sounding ignorant. No, y'all are 30, <laughs> nothing y'all, about y'all, that. Y'all are 30 years old watching dragons fly around and stuff like that. Dog. I'm cool on that, bro. The, the fact that you're saying this, yeah. it shows the real fans. It shows the real fans. You didn't even give it a it's chance. Not about dog. dragons, dude. Nothing about it. All right, y'all, y'all, y'all continue to like the White Walkers and the dragons, man. I'm gonna let y'all have it, man. You're kidding, man. Y'all All got right. that bag. How how was your weekend, Mr. Grumpy? <laughs> and for the listener, for the listeners, time out. For the listeners, the real ones that really listen, listen to how Jarrell sounds this episode in comparison to the past episodes. You're gonna hear a lot more clarity in Jarrell's voice. A lot more clarity. Well, I appreciate that. You know, we're just trying to, you know, get things popping. But uh, I didn't do. Too dude, much. It took this dude. No, 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 no. It took this dude two months to get a mic, dog. Two, two months. months. It took me two months. I thought it was only a, a month. Match, but uh, I didn't do too much this weekend. I just chilled with the people, you know what I'm saying, my people, and, you know, just relaxed, made a, made a trip to uh, Ikea, you know, hooked my daughter's room up, did my flooring in my house. You know, I, I post my projects in my in my crib. So, you know, man, I try to stay busy on the weekends, man, the weekends I don't have the kids. I still don't understand what room that was. Was You said that, that room's downstairs in the kitchen area? No, it's upstairs. So it's a storage room that I have. So you did it by yourself, dog, no help. Yeah, it was me and my step pops. Okay, it's a storage room. You said. Yeah. That's a big ass storage room, dog. Okay, you get yeah, this you bread. Know, I ain't mad at you, dog. That's where I'm gonna be doing future podcast episodes from. Man, I got my desk and everything. You can't hide the money, man. You can't hide it. You can't hide it, bro. Go ahead. Y'all go ahead, man. Y'all <laughs> Talk go ahead. about bless, man. You put real wood, or was it wood like tile? No, it's vinyl. It's vinyl. Vinyl flooring. Yeah, I ain't. I'm not putting real wood up there. You know. Just in case, because my water heater's up there, so God forbid anything goes bad, you know, it won't mess the flooring up. So that's dope, dog. That's dope doing little things, you know, around the house. I, like that's what I hear. Like when you buy a house, like at least once a year, you got to update something in the house. Yeah, once a year to keep things, you know, keep things, you know, looking good. You know, shoot, congratulations to you. You just caught the home, so yeah, yeah. dog. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be happening for you soon. Yeah, man. That's that's all I've been doing, dog. Getting stuff ready for the house. Um. I, I was really originally under the, the understanding that I'll do like one room at a time. Yeah. But just the way things are now, I, you know, I got help. You know, my girl is helping me pick out stuff. As you see, we got the accent wall. So, time on your hands, dog. Y'all got to, you know, tackle those projects, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh. 
But dog, like, this is like my first time. I've been feeling like y'all, y'all my boys. So I'm gonna be all the way real with y'all, dog. Be transparent with y'all. Like over the last couple of days, dog. I'm you know I'm back to work, so I'm getting adjusted to that, and I haven't really got a chance to like really work out. So I've been like feeling like that that joint like really affects like your 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 mental. Yeah, I'm also feeling like terrible, bro. Like it's feeling like ugly. Yeah, it's no, I feel that. Sloppy. Like sloppy's the the right word. Like it's feeling mad sloppy out here, dog. So I got yeah, my workout re- on earlier. Yeah, I just recently got got into the, back into the gym myself. Ran three miles the other day. Then you know it was lifting and stuff like that in the gym, hitting the bag and stuff like that. So you know, we gotta we gotta keep at it, dog. We don't we don't we don't recover the way that we used to, dog. So once we let off of it, dog, we gotta make sure we stay on it. And hey, Jarrell knows a little thing about um hitting stuff because him and our boy Just dog in college, they was known for punching holes in walls, dog. Known for it, dog. <laughs> Known for it, bro. Known for it. <laughs> Shut up, dog. Shut up, dog. Drew does too. Shit, all, them times he, all them times he lost in NCAA, you should have seen that boy's do- uh, college dorm room, dog. The boy had number holes all in that joint, dog. <laughs> no, there, no, there was multiple times I picked up my chair, threw that shit across the room, dog. Like, lost the whole chair, didn't care what it hit, bro. He did. <laughs> uh, y'all can't be throwing temper. Uh, I guess y'all don't do that no more, hopefully. No, nah, Jarrell broke his controller. I did break a controller recently with 2K, but bro, everybody knows who plays 2K. 2K is bullshit. 2K <laughs> be cheating all the time, bro. You really think that you playing these niggas on the court when you playing 2K, bro? Like it's annoying. It, it don't cheat. For, it don't cheat when I play. That's a lie. That's a uh, lie. That's a lie. I've heard you multiple times, dog, crying, dog, when 2K. And I'm, the I'm the king of 2K. I'm the king of 2K. I'm the king of 2K. That's all you gotta say. Just say I'm the king of 2K this year. Wow. Uh, I'm cool. I beat both of y'all. I'm cool. I won the championship in our league. Maybe once. I'm cool. Dog, I won the trip in our league. No, no, no matter how hard I try, dog, in 2K, when I'm facing Drew, dog, it's, it's not good enough, bro. He's like the Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> dog, Drew, crazy, Drew, finds a cheat, Drew finds a cheat, a way to cheat every single year. Dog. I, I would say he did, dog. Like, he, he be using some nice-ass strategies, dog. He do, he do. But Drew, you got to talk shit to him. If you talk shit he, to him. He got Bobo. He got the most overrated player on 2K, and act, they acting like this nigga is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Not that shit all. No, I played this nigga Jarvis. Alice Caruso dropped 30, dog, when I played yeah. this nigga. <laughs> yeah, like, it's stupid stuff like that, dog. When you play Drew, dog, you got to deal with it. You got to find the hidden gems. It's called being a manager. Shut up, dog. I give him that, dog. I give him that, dog. So, time out, bro. Before we get started, y'all, y'all hear about that, um, that baseball player? So, basically, his team was up by, like, seven runs, bro. And um, he had, he hit a home run, and like everyone that likes baseball is like up and on. Like, oh, he has no respect for the game. Blah 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 blah. Just going in on this dude, and like the pitcher hit the next batter. Like baseball has some stupid traditions, and that's why nobody rocks with that shit no more, bro. Like, what is he supposed to do? Is he not supposed to swing? Exactly. And his manager, I think it's a black dude. His manager didn't defend him. His manager was like, "That's that's no respect for the game." Huh? Teams can get up seven seven run leads, bro. No, oh, baseball's dead. That shit, no one cares about that shit, dog. It's, it's done for. I hate baseball because baseball got, has, oh. has them stupid rules like when you hit a home run, you got to run to all the bases. You can't just flaunt and, you know, you can't walk. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I just knocked that shit out the park 500 plus yards, bro. If I want to fucking stunt, bro, after hitting the fucking fastball, bro, I'm going to do that shit. Like, and I don't give a shit. It's dumb, bro. It'll actually make it more fun, dog. If it's like yeah. more talking. Yeah. If it's faster pace. But speaking of dead, dog, I, I got a hot take. I really got a hot take right now, dog. We talking about baseball's dead. Drake's run might be dead, bro. You're you're, you're crazy. Uh, you're I, crazy. I, I watched that you're video, crazy. bro. You're crazy. Hey, hey, Drake can't run routes for shit. Yeah, look, I was about to say, dog. <laughs> you ain't getting nobody with that weak ass fake, dog. No, nah, he gave me. No, nah, he faked to the outside, cut in, dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there no, like, no. Outside and cut in, bro. That hey, was bro. terrible, bro. Bro, I see somebody's uh, somebody's Instagram story, bro. They said that nigga ain't shaking salt, bro. When can we catch? Who was it? No, that was no, That was the weakest route. No, I think my daughter can run a better route than that, bro. That <laughs> ass. I really hey, think that. That's no cat, bro. His my jumper, his jumper look good, though. His jumper look good. 
My one-year-old son could probably run a better route than Drake, dog. No he at least did, like, a, a comeback route. Like, something, yeah. dog. Like, well, he, he should have just ran a fly route. Like, just run a fly. Just run a fly. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> just go straight, my nigga. Don't, don't do no cuts, dog. Just run straight. But my, my on. hot take on that song, like, first of all, bro, Lil Durk had the best part in that song. Really? I, I like his Dirk. Verse, his verse was good. So, talking about, is Dirk the dude that um, Gillian would be talking about all the time? Hmm? Or is that G Herbo? Yeah, well, G Herbo, G Herbo will be talking about Lil Dirk. I don't know. I don't watch Gillian them no more since Dev, since Dev left, dog. Yeah, so, like, he had the best part to me. And, I, I okay, I can see the song growing because they're going to play that shit out. Baby. Baby. Like that that that's the thing. Like Drake always finds a way to like He's make smart. a theme out of his song or something catchy. I get mad. But it just seemed like so damn corny to me, dog. Like the video is corny as fuck. Like over crying. Yeah, oh, come on, man. You got some tissue. Well, I have some tissue, man. Come on. Okay. That's Drake though, dog. It's Drake. It's Drake. It's him being himself. That's mm-hmm. nothing to do with that's nothing to do with the music though. So like, so, I, like, so I've said this, I've said this, I said this last summer, and I said Drake was on the decline, and uh, I really do believe that Drake is on the decline. Um, does he still make good music? Yes, but it's not as fire as it once was, and I and I believe that's because of the fact that we're starting to get older and we're starting to mature a little bit and we're starting to recognize sounds and it, everything is just kind of just this is my perspective. This is me talking about Drake. Is that everything is starting to sound the same? with Drake and it, it sounds uninspired it sounds uninspired it sounds like I made it it's you know you sound, you sound utterly I'm gonna be real you sound ridiculous right now the fact you say Drake sounds the same he literally has like 10 different bags he gets in no listen he, listen the last five songs he's came out with are all different so how are no, you saying what I'm saying is is when he gets into that specific bag like a commercial hit it's it sounds the same but I'm not you talking can't, about his West, I'm not talking about West Indies Drake. I'm not talking about English, like British Drake, UK Drake. I'm talking oh, about I'm talking about radio hit Drake. So Tiffany one specific Blue. thing sounds the same. It I'm does. Getting. It does. Like <laughs> Grease and Pop Star sound just like that track. What? Uh, yo, listen, <laughs> please kill this man. In the, please kill this man. You'd say that Grease sounds the same as this song. Laugh now. Well, Grease, like, well, Grease number one was fucking Pop trash. Star. If you want me to be honest with you, Grease was fucking trash. They sound, all those three songs sound totally different. Like, what are you listening I, to? I, I, disagree. I disagree. I feel like Pop Star, I feel like Pop Star and that, this most recent track are comparable. Yeah, you're 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 wild. Dog. I don't know and, what you, and, I don't know what you. And to be honest to. with you, and to be honest with you, that single is some mid. It's it really is. not that great. It's it not is. that great of a single. It is. It's some and, and true. And the thing about you is that you can never be subjective about Drake because you love wow. Drake. So much. You I love think Drake, so much. Drake can I, say, "Hey, I said this to you in, in, in our group chat." Drake can say, "Hey," on a track, and you be like, "Yo, that was the most fire thing Drake ever did in the track, yo. <laughs> That's false. You, you, Just because it's Drake, you're, OBO, my name. you're not OBO fan. You're not OBO. You're not. You're throwing spot on my. You're throwing spot on my name right now, dog. I'm honest about Drake. If I don't, I'm gonna you're be not. honest. No, you're not. No, you're not. Jar- Jarvis, is he honest? About I was Drake? honest about the grease track. Did I? Jarvis. I did not hype it at all. I said it was all right. I said his, I said I didn't like his voice. Now, did listen, I not say that? I'll, I'll be real. I, I can't be a hypocrite, dog. Because anything Nas drops, I love because that's my favorite artist. So it's going, like, it's going to sound good to me because that's my favorite artist. Now, if it's some trash, it'll be hard for – like, the, everyone said the non serial album was trash, and I still listened to it. I still liked it. So I, I don't know, though. I, I can't I – can't No, but I'm it. saying, though, Drew, Drew, Drew is never critical of Drake. We know that. Growing, okay. Come on, dog. Come Jarvis, on, was I honest mean, about Greece? Give me mean. Is Drew was ever I honest about Drake? Greece? Keep it real. I, I, I never heard you talk about Greece. Was that I said that I, did, I said it was cool. I didn't like his voice. That's honest. I haven't gone back and played Grease. sucked. Grease sucked. <laughs> Just like Jarvis said, dog. If it's your favorite artist, they can't make trash in your eyes. Bro, yeah. I listen to J. Cole, and J. Cole has made trash songs, and I've said that. Drake is my – I mean, J. Cole is my favorite artist. Of all time? No, I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about of all time. Who's my favorite artist of all time? Yeah. I don't know. You don't have one of those, so you can't relate to us, Drew. Well, it it – it, well, it varies because, you know, I go through errors. So, at one point, my favorite artist of all time was T.I. And when T.I. was putting out whack shit, I told you, Jarvis, that he was putting out whack shit. That's after he declined, though. 
He started. Yeah, but I still told you that he put out whack shit. But okay, to, to bring us as long back. As Drake does, as long as Drake does numbers, he's not on the decline. So just because an artist is doing numbers doesn't mean they're not on a decline now? If he's on a decline, then, it's, then he wouldn't get supported. If everybody, if people don't that's like it no that's more, that's he won't get that's supported. That, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Wow. Wayne, didn't the fucking well, Carter, didn't, didn't the Carter uh, Five go fucking platinum and that shit was ass? So, the point. So, so, so Wayne's project was great, huh? The Carter Five was fucking great. It was awesome. The mu- what are you talking me, about right now? You sound music. Music. You to sound me, the music right now. That's not true. Because you can say the same for movies. Will Smith just came out with the Gemini Man. Nobody watched that bullshit. So people, if people don't like it, they're not going to support it. What are you saying? That's, you're making my fucking point. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just, no, I'm making my point. I just said if people don't like it, they're not going to support it. Will oh. Smith is a huge actor. He just came out with a trash you movie. You said record sales, my dude. It. You said record sales. Listen, li- hold on. Hold on. Let's go back to the original argument. You said record sales, okay? Jarvis, he's changing the argument again. No, I just told you that the Carter Five went platinum, but was ass. So that means that he's still he's still good. He's still good. No, I'm saying that my point that. is that it if people, he has a fan base, he's popular. It means okay, he has so a fan people. Base. So somebody liked it. The, I'm saying the Gemini Man. Nobody supported it because it was a terrible movie. So All even right. Will Smith has a huge fan base. Did people All go out right. and support it? Did they? Like I said, I think mo- I think most people will agree with Jarvis and I's statement that Drake is on the decline. All right. I, I, think, I think he's I think he's starting to like this single is the beginning of the decline, which is that's that's no like he's been at the like Drake has had a hell of a run. Yeah. But some your run has I mean, okay, let me let me backtrack. This could based on the music output, the quality music output that he's been on. I think this this might I'm gonna keep my eyes open. But this might be the beginning of the end because, like, the song did not slap to me. Like, usually a Drake single. Now it it might change. I might feel another. I'm, I might feel differently next week because it might grow on me. But right as of right now, dog, that shit was terrible to me. And the video, the music video was corny. It was like Drake living out his childhood dreams. Like, oh yeah, I want to play these 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 professional athletes. Like he's being a groupie, dog. Like, he, and I think- and I and I've and I've said it to multiple people, and I continue to say that I think Drake is the greatest artist of all time. I'm not I'm not disputing Drake's greatness, but what I'm saying is he's on the decline, and that's okay. He's had just like Jarvis said, he's had a hell of a run since '08. Drake has been on top of the game. And 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 let's be real, his decline ain't like most rappers' decline. His decline is just like being like a, a 99 <laughs> overall in 2K. And he's yeah, like 95. Just don't I just don't like the way it sounds. Sounds disrespectful. <laughs> I just don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way it sounds. I can be, I, and I'm, I, hey, I could be biased. I could be whatever you want to call me. I just, to me, I'm not going to listen to my ears. Once the music starts sounding bad to my ears is when I'll say it. Okay. I have not, it hasn't sounded bad to my ears yet. That's all I'm so saying. So do you think, all right, so do you think Drake's production or Drake's lyrics have been carrying him in, in this most recent phase of his career? Both. He had bars on this track. What you mean? Yeah, bar he, had to, he had to borrow. He had to borrow about Kanye. He what did. He he about, what he said? I heard he was dissing Pusha T. What do you say about Pusha T? He was a slight jab at, at Kanye on this track. What do you say? Um, yeah, oh. The distance between you is not that close. Is not a closable gap. Something like that. How's that about Kanye though? He just had to deal with gap. Oh, oh, okay, my bad. Okay, my bad. Okay. 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 I like that. I like. I like that Drake. I like that little shot. It was, it was, it, he always has bars, no matter what the track is. He don't have a bar in there. All right, fine. Y'all, it, it doesn't matter at this point. If there's he, did, he said, "I got a bigger gap between me and you, dude." <laughs> like gap. Does Kanye right. get to do a gap? Let's, go, let's go. To, let's go. To your tra- nah, let's go to Ultra. Nah, let's go to Ultra Black. Not like Doja Cat. <laughs> I like that shit, dog. Exactly. This nigga talking about that bullshit about Drake. Ultra, Ultra Black, Black baby. Nigga. Let's go to Nas, nigga. I ain't ultra black. Nigga had the same song as fucking, uh, what the fuck that white boy name? <laughs> <laughs> nigga had the exact same song as fucking Logic, nigga. <laughs> I'm ultra no, black. No, 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 no. Ultra black slap. Let's not do that, dog. Let's not. That, that's grown man music, dog. That's like that's like celebratory, dog. Especially said my son will be my resurrection. Constantly learning lessons. I die. You get the message. I hope you better than I. Life's precious. 
two stepping. Jerrell got a son. He can relate to that shit, dog. I, I want to relate to it, but I don't make boys. I make girls. So I'm gonna look at my girl and pretend like that's my son tomorrow. That was a good bar though. Like my son will be my resurrection. I'm never dying. You get the message. Like the 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 thoughts that you put into your. We're about to go deeper because everything you teach your kids, right? The values you store in them, they keep your memory alive. And they pass it down from generation to generation. My grandfather, stuff that he instilled in my father, my father has instilled in me. So right now with your kids, what type of legacy do y'all want to leave for y'all, leave for y'all kids? Mm. What do, what do y'all, what do y'all, when, it, when it's all said and done, we all got to die. What legacy do you want to leave? I don't, I don't ever want to get to the point where I'm on my deathbed. And I'm like, man, I wish I would have did this, that, and the third. Yeah, I'm not talking about like monetary stuff. Like this is cool, like, but what legacy? Cause I I know like Breaker, he's he's a he's a big listener of the podcast. He was talking about how his uncle passed away, and his uncle taught his son, which is his cousin, how to like um do like pause, like woodwork, like fix desks, like 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 what Drill was like, doing, like, it's like handiwork. Yeah, and he passed it on to his son. So what what type of legacy do y'all want to leave when y'all gone? Man, uh, I would definitely say uh, non-complacency um, is, is definitely one thing I want to pass to my kids. You know, don't be complacent. Always go out there and get it. You know, there's always different opportunities and more opportunities for you for growth and for you to become a better person. Uh, hard work, instill that into them. Uh, good morals. Uh, man, that's... It's heavy, it's right? Heavy. Yeah, it is heavy. That's it. That, that, that's what I've been thinking about all weekend after I had a conversational breaker. And I'm like, what, what type of legacy do I want to leave, leave for my kids? So I, I thought about it. Of course, I got to think about it more in depth. But some things you're saying, like hard work, like, and that, that's one of my dad's like biggest things. Like my dad's like, don't half-ass anything. If you're going to do anything in life, go 100%. Give it your all. I don't yeah. give a damn if it's making your bed or yeah. just whatever you do in life. Like, I want my kids to see that I gave it my all, exhausted right. all options. You know what I'm saying? So that that's that's one of my biggest things um, that, that I want to leave and, like, the positive influence. I'm, I'm an educator. Yeah. So if I have my funeral dog and, like, none of my students show up, that means I didn't do my job right. Yeah. If not yeah. one student shows up, I didn't do my job right. So I just want to instill the fact that I've always, like, tried to um, be a positive influence on the youth. Because even, yeah. like, back in the day when me and Jarrell was growing up, we would have, like, little kids around the neighborhood and we'd be showing them the ropes. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think that's, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. And so I feel like we pass down what Drake said in the last – in the laugh now, cry later. Don't be for bums, all right? They can't even pay you enough to react, all right? <laughs> that's what I'm going to pass down, all right? This niggas on Facebook that began spicy, all right? Do you think that was a bar? Do you think that was a bar at Pusha T? Of course. And Kanye. Yeah. But that's, game, weak, dog. that's hella weak, dog. How could Drake diss them, but he want to pull the plug on Pusha's business? He got so- the power, nigga. He got the power, nigga. Have them. Let them try. Let them try to do it. Go ahead and try. But yeah, anyway, niggas on Facebook <laughs> won't keep they, my name out their mouth. So, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a follow my nigga Drake, all right? You can't pay me enough to react, all right? I ain't beefing with bums, all right? How about that? Hey, my boy is on one tonight. He's dead. Now I know what it feels like to have a hater, dog. That should feel good, dog. That means you, you're doing something right, right? You got haters. He's different you're doing, tonight. You're doing He's something different. right. You got haters. So, you know, I like that. First you're hater. You in a different bag tonight. Shout outs to you, my dude. Thanks for the views, nigga. Shout out to you, boy. Thank you for the views. Keep keep watching us. You got me on your screen, nigga. How about that? <laughs> bro, I don't want no smoke, bro. I don't want no smoke with nobody, bro. Uh, hey, well, hey well, hold on. One thing I need to address, bro, is Dave K. Johnson Jr., bro. Bro. Uh, y'all boys in y'all bag. Stop out, y'all. I wish I had a horn. Let's make this a clip, bro. Dave, before you get on Facebook, Please watch the podcast, bro. Please. Because, bro, you will argue with us to death. <laughs> to <laughs> death, bro. You will carry on an argument for days, bro, without watching the podcast and we explain something to you 
And you'll be like, oh, well, I didn't catch that part. Well, let me go back and watch it. Bro, just watch the podcast, bro. <laughs> we appreciate your support. We like the fact that you're always in the comments, you know, showing us love and whatnot and disagreeing with us and, you know, opening up the conversation, you know, via social media. But, bro, please watch us. They didn't watch some episode, dog. Dave, Dave is a clip boy. <laughs> I appreciate that. As long as you, long as you do, do something of ours, I'm good with it, dog. Hey, shout out to all our fans and listeners, yo. Shout out to shout out to everybody, dog, who supports us, dog. That's and the right. haters, niggas that hate too. That's all you. the niggas that like it, all the niggas that hate too. Shout out to you too. We appreciate y'all, man. Drew's in a different bag right now, dog. He's in his he man's bag. Uh, I let it. No, I let it fly. I let it fly long enough. It's time to say something. <laughs> It was time. It was time, dog. All right. Well, go ahead then. Go, James. I, I rock with both y'all. Y'all both my brothers, dog. I want to see. I want to see any beefs, dog. I'm like Maul, dog. I try to straighten it out. You know what I mean? I, I, I like the dead to be. I, I don't got no beef with nobody. I don't got no beef with social media. I, I think it's all fun. Like I said, especially when we get in the comments and you know me and Dave and you and whoever whomever else joins. I think it, I, I love it. I think it's all funny games. You know? Yeah. I like until, they cross, until they cross the line. It's funny games. <laughs> When niggas get disrespectful, that's when I got to speak, nigga. So, we'll leave it at that. We'll address it then. You already said to address it then. I already addressed it, nigga. I said what I had to say. You're trying to put some fire to the beef, dog. <laughs> <laughs> You're on instigating. No, I'm not instigating. I'm just saying address it then. I already said what I had to say, dog. On, on our boy. What, I said what I said. Yeah, on, on our boy, just, um, son, like, you, hey, son, I'm listening. Hey, son, he's talking shit about you. I mean, I wouldn't take it if I was you, but I'm not you, son. So, I mean, you do what you want to do. I mean, I'm, I'm not you, dog. I'm like, just chill. But um, let, let's, 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 let's move on, dog. I want – I love everyone. Jarrell, stop instigating. I'm not instigating. I said address it. Address whatever he got to address. I'm not instigating. I'll never do that. All right. So, let, let's move on to – Joe Biden, he picked his vice president um, for the Democratic nominee, and he picked Kamala Harris. See, my thing is, bro, I'll be all over with you. Black people, I love y'all. I sincerely do. I love, I love my black people. But y'all are falling for the same okie doke that y'all fell for last election. In 2016, Trump did this whole thing about Hillary and the emails. And people was like, I mean, Hillary's just as bad. Look at her. She's racist. She's just as bad as Trump. But she's doing it um, in a sneak, a shady way. She's pandering. And so, y'all saw what happened, right? Y- y'all saw what happened? So I'm not a big Joseph Biden supporter. I'm not a big Kamala Harris supporter. But I'm a big supporter of my community. And I'm a big, I'm an American, right? And us as Americans, like, let's, let's scratch that Republican, Democrat, Independent, Trump. And I'm just talking about COVID. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get into other stuff. That's this, let, let's, just, let's just make sense about this. He's fumbled this whole COVID-19 situation. I mean... I talked to people who are Trump supporters and they admitted it like, yeah, he, he did a lot of foul shit because he did some good, but he did a lot of bad shit. So I personally don't think it's in our country's best interest to just, oh yeah, well she locked people up or Biden, da, 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 da. I don't like them. So I'm not going to vote. When you don't vote, that's the automatic vote for Trump. So I'm not going to tell anyone, anyone what to do with their vote. I get it, but Trump is divisive, and I don't think he's adequate enough for the job, personally. And that's not even on no I'm a Democrat shit. Like, if Mitt Romney was on a Republican ticket, I'll probably roll with any other, there's anyone that's adequate right now that can get our country out of this COVID-19 situation. That, that's the major thing right now. We, we have parents, relatives, kids that all can be impacted by this i have friends that grandfathers who uncles cousins have died due to covid so at this point we just need someone that can get us out of this and trump has already proven that he's in over his head so that's that's all i got on that bro biden already told you how he felt 
If you don't vote for him, you're not. If you don't vote for him, you're not black. And basically, getting Kamala Harris is a double down on that statement. <laughs> now he's really. Now he really means it. So now I got a black vice president. So now he even he means it even more. He and, people, it. and this is what kills me. Black people. Oh, she's not even full black. Da 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 da. She, bruh. All this, all this dichotomy within our race. Like, let's. This is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I don't want to take the take the light away from Kamala Harris. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great pick. I mean, I, I, I do. I think it's a very good pick. Um, I think that somebody that – I think she's someone that represents the minority community, number one. Um, I think that she can help uh, with the minority community as far as um, bringing attention to social injustice and, and those causes on, on that standpoint. Um, I think that she can speak to that of being a woman and the woman, uh, women's uh, issues like that um, in, in the United States and, and, and all over you know, the world and be able to relate to women uh, in power. Um, and I think, I think that she is going to be the brains behind Biden's presidency if he does win. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, Kamala Harris is just very intellectual. Um, the, one, the one knock on her is her affiliation with being it uh, with being. Um, Don't worry, Drew's a Drew's a Trump supporter. He had to leave. <laughs> he had enough of his rhetoric. With but, her, with her affiliate of being an attorney in the state of California and putting uh, incarcerating a lot of black men in, in the system. Um, a lot of people don't realize that she oversaw all, all of those cases, um, so she didn't directly put those individuals in jail. Um, she also helped with uh, getting uh, lighter sentences for individuals in California who ended up. Um, having misdemeanors with uh, marijuana cases and things like that. Um, the bad thing about it is that she was also involved in, um, I think, the public school system in California. That if students were not going to class, um, they were supposed they were directed to arrest parents. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so obviously, there are some things that she has been a part of that we may not agree with. And there's some things um, that she's done that we all that we agree with. Um, but, but I don't think any senator or any uh, congressman or, or woman um, has a perfect record or clean record. Um, I think it comes with the territory when it comes to politics. Um, but I, I like the pick. I, I think it's a very solid pick. I think it's a very wise and smart pick for Joe Biden. Um, and hopefully she will help Joe Biden not put his foot in his mouth. Um, because just like you said, some of the comments that Joe Biden has recently made as far as the African-American community not being as diverse as the Hispanic community, uh, doesn't sit too well with us, especially when you're trying to buy our vote. And I understand that, you know, you're picking an African-American running mate, um, but still, that's not okay. And hopefully, oh, those so what, right. what do you mean by that diverse? Like there's different subgroups of Hispanics. Like you have like um, yeah. Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, yeah. El Salvadorian, Panamanian. Yeah. And, uh, and I get that. I understand it. It may be, it may be a true statement, but it just doesn't, it doesn't sit well. It doesn't resonate well with me for you to say something like that when you don't come from either, from either group. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, he, he's definitely, like I said, I don't think he's the perfect candidate. I think there's anyone else other than Trump. Like I'm at a crossroads right now to where if, if he does get elected, like us as black people, instead of saying, Oh, I'm not voting for them. Okay. So if they do get elected. Let's hold them to the fire. Let's make sure as a group, let's come together and make sure that they do what they said they're going to do as far as the black agenda goes. That should be the focus right now. Because you already know Trump is not in the best interest of the black community. Period. Yeah, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I've been a, a, a large supporter of them changing the age limit of the presidency. I think it should go from, it should be a, a max age limit from 35 to 65. Yeah. I feel like when you get in... I mean, if you if you really sit down and think about it, the individuals like Trump and Biden, bro, they were in the civil rights movement, bro. Like, they saw that. Like, they experienced that. You know, whether they were on one side of the fence or the other, like, they were in that. You know what I mean? So to have somebody who's younger, who's able to relate to our generation and the people and things that are happening in today's society and not just worrying about, you know, see not worrying about you know the economy from a standpoint of wall street and ceos and you know other other issues i feel like there needs to be an age limit on that yeah 
I just don't feel like they they relate well to well to today's society. Like I said, but the average person dies like in their late seventies. So we can yeah. have a president elected that could, term that could possibly die during their 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 term. He's seventy eight, bro. Like Biden is seventy eight. How old is Trump? Like seventy six? I think he's seventy four or seventy three. These boys see that's the problem, dog. Got his old white dudes, bro. It's it's like a a, a country club, bro. Yeah. yeah. So. Yo. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Pause it. But yo. <laughs> Dog. So for the listeners, I don't know if y'all heard, but a player from the Seattle Seahawks. So let me rewind. So they're in training camp right now. And you can't have any visitors during training camp. So what the what he did was he tried to sneak a girl and get some yabba dabbas. And he got caught and the team found out he got cut, dog. He, so he got cut trying to get some coochie, bro. That's wild. Bro, uh, what, what round pick was he, bro? Do y'all know? I don't know who he is, dog. I'll be real. No, he was first he wasn't no high draft pick. I don't believe it's correct. Look it up real quick, Jarvis. But I don't think he was a. Was it for that? that? This is the girl, dog. Basically. You're lying, dog. You're lying. This is her, bro. He lost. He lost his career over yeah, her. A, no, absolutely not, bro. His career is done, bro. Well, like first of all, you're not in a bubble. The NFL is not in a bubble. So why are you risking it for this one night? Like you don't have to stay there if I'm not if I'm mistaken. Nah, tra- training camp you have a uh, it's like dormitories and stuff like that you stay in wherever where, 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 where yeah, you're. But, staying, so. but it's gonna end soon, right? Like training camp ain't that long. Like they're gonna go back home eventually. Yeah. Like for the teams in the bubble, if they make their playoffs, they're gonna be there for months. Like it's not the same. But dog, he's like what 22, 23 years old, bro. You know how them boys is giving it up nowadays, dog. Them boys but, can't hold out long, dog. dog he it's acting like college he athletes. He's acting like he's a first round pick, like top ten pick. Like he like they don't care about you, dude. <laughs> You're a nobody. They can get a thousand of you off the street. Like All right. Not a thousand of them. But bro, there's plenty of undrafted people, undrafted uh people out of college that they can pick up another person. Oh yeah, they can definitely pick up another person. That's what I'm trying to say. Like he's not some superstar talent that they can't miss. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out why he thought he could risk his career to get some yabba dabbas, dog. I don't get that, bro. Would y'all do it? If y'all, didn't, no. if y'all didn't know this, listen, if y'all didn't know this, y'all were going to get cut, would y'all do it? Would y'all sneak a joint in? No. It's not worth it. Better watch a party tape. Better watch a party tape and go to sleep. It's not worth it, dog. You watch risking your whole tape. career? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> more, but, hey, I'll be with well, she got to be nicer than that bullshit Jarvis just pulled up. <laughs> got to be way nicer than her. Because I'm not losing my career over no weak stuff, bro. I'm not doing that, bro. That's, I mean. <laughs> bro, she's weak. Y'all keep it a bean, bro. That girl. Uh, what if she got that WAP, dog? What well, if she got the, uh, I'm risking it all. I'm trying to edit myself, though. I want to censor myself right now. But we, well, she got that Becky, though. It ain't worth it. Nothing's worth it, dog. Nothing's worth it. Yeah. It's career. Y'all will do it. Y'all capping right now for the, for the, oh. for the pod. Y'all will I'm not getting fired over this. What y'all, y'all, y'all would do it. No. Y'all would no. do it, bro. At 21, 22 years old, bro. So, I mean, okay, let's, let's keep it real. At 21, 22. Y'all would do it. Did you ever bring your girl to your job and try to get it in? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Exactly. <laughs> no, Jarrell, that's like you trying to sneak a chick into the fucking military base in a, in a military uniform talking about you. you gonna I'm about to that, say, you'd be, you be surprised about how many military people actually do that. Yeah, they do that. They that's do bad. that in basic training, bro. Like, that was a weak comparison. Surprised. That was a weak comparison. Yeah, that's bad. No. It's bad. <laughs> Enough people would do that. Bro, they do it. Bro, they do it in tech school. Bro, they do it in tech school, and they do it in in uh, basic training. It ain't worth it, dog. It's not worth it. And I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all, dog. 
let, let's rewind back to the college days. That joint used to be so much fun, dog. When you, a girl sneak you into her dorm, bro. That was so much fun, dog. After visit hours, like that 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 shit was so stupid. Now think about it, dog. All you gotta do is stand by the exit door and let you in, dog. Like you didn't. <laughs> You definitely didn't have to walk through the front, bro. Sign in. Well, that's, that's HU though, because HU got the private, got that uh, private campus, so you can't be over there at a certain hour, right? But yeah, but ODU too. Like some of the dorms, like they couldn't have visitors like past nine. What? Yeah. Nobody followed that rule, bro. Nobody followed that rule. Let's keep it. A, let's keep it a bean. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah. Shout out to him. <laughs> You're not getting a paycheck from the NFL anytime soon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like come to come to the off work podcast, dog. <laughs> Good enough. You could probably be a fourth mic. If not, <laughs> you're done, son. <laughs> this nigga driver's always shouting out random people, dog. <laughs> <laughs> nigga always giving a shout out. Oh man. So we have, we have a pod question. Time for our pod question. So this person says, um, She's asking, do you need closure in a relationship? She says she's about to get married and she feels like she needs um, closure because when she's like online, she's like always looking at her ex-boyfriend's like Facebook page and like checking to see what's going on. She says she's over him, but she feels like she needs closure before she gets married. She's not over him, number one. And she's still checking his social media. Number two, That, yes. that means she's not over someone? Yes. Have you ever checked someone's social media that, that you were over, but you're just trying to see what's good, see what's new? Yeah, but if they're checking it consistently, on a consistent basis, you're not over them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else. But hey, I'm petty, dog, but sometimes it'd be fun, dog, if you look at, like, uh, someone you used to deal with in the past, and, like, I hate to sound petty. Here we go. Lie, but... <laughs> they, they just look like jacked up. Be like, damn, I, I dodged a bullet, bro. Woo! I mean, yeah, it, it do be like that sometimes. I mean, we all we all got those ones that you know we dodged the bullet on. But I mean, I think I think it's human nature for all of us to have closure. I mean, I think that's what helps us grow, and especially into into our next situation that that we go into. Um, it, it doesn't leave the door open for any um, unwanted things or. Um, to have any, you know, regrets about anything like that. I think that it's, it's good. I think it's a, it's a healthy thing for, for individuals to have closure, whether the, whether the situation ended on good or bad terms. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do think that you need to have closure before you move into another relationship um, with someone. Uh, but the thing about closure is not a two way street. Like yeah. you can have closure, but your ex might not. And like, it's not going to, it just doesn't work hand to hand. Like you're not both going to get closure at the same time. Like, you know, people get it in different ways. So, uh, but before moving on to another relationship, I definitely feel like it's important to have it. Um, you know, accept what happened with your last relationship, you know, learn from it, you know, take those lessons, you know, things you did right, things you did wrong. And like, you know, close that chapter, you know, time for the next, you know, on to the next. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna be real, bro. I have two stories on this. Like I never really thought I needed closure until uh, I had an ex-girlfriend and she went to ODE, right? And she didn't live on campus, but she, she was a commuter. But bro, every time I saw her, I was get pissed off. I could be like in a good mood, chilling with the boys, kicking it. And then like, I see her like in the, in the web center and I just get like infuriated, bro. Like it's pissed off. Like why, why is she in my space? Like, wh why are you here? This, this is my space. Like, go back to wherever you came from. Like, this is not you. So, like, my, my senior year, like, I didn't, I didn't like the way that made me feel. So, it was, like, probably, like, maybe a day before graduation, I had, I had bumped into her on campus, and I just told her, I said, you know, any, I, I, I just want to let you know that I forgive you for um, any transgressions you made towards me, and I hope that you forgive anything that I, I've ever done to you in life. And I said, I'm not expecting you to apologize. You know, you don't have to say anything. I'm just getting this off my chest. And she was like, okay, well, you know, I accept it. And, you know, I, I wish the, the best for you. And we had like a little conversation. And that kind of like showed me like closure is necessary. Not even, not even like towards moving on, but like for your heart. Like to have that, that, that bitterness and that anger in your heart. 
So I will say that. And to keep it a triple double, quadruple being with you. I had a, a ex girlfriend that we broke up in 08, bro. And she she called me and she was like, if you want closure, I want to give you that. Other than that, don't contact me ever again in life. Because it's like one of those bad breakups. So me being, it's 08. I'm having pride, dog. Like, um, fuck out of here. She's trying to play me. I'm done with her, dog. But I never really got over her because there was, like, never closure there. And I didn't really, like, get over her to keep it a bean until I had my first child. And I'm going to keep it all the way a bean. And I was, that's when I was, okay, like, I'm, I'm, it's the next chapter for real. So. That's crazy. But, yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's necessary. And like you said, it's healthy. So. Did this boy yeah. say that? Did this, did this dude just, that's crazy me? That means he wasn't listening, dog. He didn't care. Anytime, I was listening. Anytime someone said that's crazy, they don't care. Listen, bro. I was listening. I said that's bad, crazy. Bro. For you to have your first kid, bro, and then not to be over, that's wild. That's wild to me. Ball bag, dog. It's, good. it's all good. <laughs> Damn, bro. Y'all niggas don't never give, give a nigga no slack, bro. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to introduce a, a new thing that we thought would be a, a cool idea for the pod. So we're going to start. Why are you leaving, dog? I don't know, dog. He, something wrong with this dude, man. He got a little bladder. He got a little bladder, dog. For a little bladder. <laughs> Keep disappearing on the pod. This is not a good visual experience, Drew. I forgot my phone. Come on, little bladder. What you doing? I didn't have my phone for the topic. Because you're a little bladder. That's why. Hey, man. Hey, when last time y'all peed on yourselves, dog? Let's keep it real. All right. Hey, you when is the last time you peed on yourself, dog? Nigga, well, I was a child. What the fuck? I don't get it. No, I ain't got one. One last time. No. When last time you pooped on yourself, though? You never had to start to poop on yourself? When I had a diaper on, nigga? The fuck? I was like, what? <laughs> uh, that's wild, dog. You poop on yourself. Bruh. Bruh. You never had the flu? Yeah. What does it got to do with pooping? Hey, bro, I ain't gonna cap, bro. I had the flu, bro. <laughs> and I thought, like, I just had to, you know, take a little fart or something like that, bro. Yeah. It happened. I let it out, bro. It was squirting, bro. It was, it was looking like like Hershey Kisses back there, bro. Bro, it was hurt. I was hurt. You, the dog. When I was little, dog, a little boy, and you know when you used to wait. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a little boy. <laughs> uh, but nah, dog. Like if I would like went to bed at night, dog, I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell my parents though. I used to go to the closet and get a towel and lay that shit down over the spot. Go right back to sleep, dog. <laughs> like nothing ever happened, dog. <laughs> go right, dog, right back to sleep. Like mm, sleeping good, dog. I'm a, you I'm lay a, the towel I'm down, it's good as new. Yeah, y'all boys are nasty, dog. That is nasty. No, I'm gonna keep it real, dog. I, I pee in the bed. I was in seventh grade, dog. I'm gonna keep it all the way real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know, you know now. <laughs> dog, I couldn't spend out my friend's house, dog, because like, my parents are getting embarrassed. I was peeing in their bed. It was pretty bad, bro. Like, I, I honestly, like, dog, never mind. I don't get too much in my bag. Yeah, bro, don't. <laughs> bro, if I'd have known that back in seventh grade, boy, I'd have lit your ass up. Dog, Sam, dog, Sammy was at the crib, bro. I'll never forget, dog. Sammy, Sammy spent the night. Shout out to Sammy. Um, He just got out of jail. Uh, I heard him on the Ashton Hayes podcast. First of all, Sammy, let me, let me get my shit off real quick. Sammy said that in 11th grade, I didn't know how to spell college. Dog, shut up, Sammy. Shut up. I, I was in honors English, dog. I was in honors English, boy. You, you were, you were a dropout, boy. Don't disrespect me. Damn, Damn. Sammy, like that, bro. Uh, Why are you doing Sammy, there, bro? You gotta disrespect me, dog. Shout, shout, shout out to Sammy. Dog. I love you, dog. But you od. <laughs> shout out to Sammy, dog. Tell my business on the on the Ash and Hayes podcast. I don't like that, bro. Yo, y'all boys got beef with everybody in the game tonight, dog. Uh, I don't like that, dog. Like, how you gonna say I'm like, I ain't know how to spell college? I'm in t- 10th grade. And I was an honor. I was in, <laughs> time out. I was in Mr. Lucas. If, if anybody knows me in Bethel, I was in Mr. Lucas honors English class, dog. I knew how to spell college, boy. You were a dropout, boy. How about Damn, that? Damn, hey, yo. No, nah, get your shit off, dog. Get your <laughs> shit off. <laughs> Yo, we got beef, dog. This, this podcast is called beef. Bro. I'm just your son. I'm just saying, though, son. 
<laughs> Jarrell, come on, dog. Dog, get your get your shit off, Jarrell. Come on. I don't like that, dog. I don't got beef with nobody. Man. Nah, nah, get your shit off. Get your shit off, nigga. Come See, on, dog. I'm I'm gonna talk on my platform because you try to you try to you try to talk, be real spicy on someone else's platform, dog. So I'm gonna respond on my platform. Don't ever disrespect me like that again. I love you though, Sammy. Shout out to you, D. Anyways, um, so Sammy spit it out at a crib, bro. This one I had the bunk beds. You remember that joint? Yeah. It was like seventh grade or whatever, dog. You spent the night, dog. I pissed all over the, all that damn bed, bro. I ain't gonna lie. So I know when I got up, I was on the lower tier. He was on the top. Pause. And um, he came down. He was like, "Bro, like you, you, you ready to go outside?" And I said, "I'll be there in a minute." So I knew if I got up, you're gonna see the wet stuff on the on the um, bed. And you know how Sammy was back in the day, dog. The whole neighborhood would have knew, dog. Y'all been getting y'all roll on at me, bro. So I stayed there, dog. I said, "Yo, you go, go, man, go ahead, man." <laughs> Had to change everything, bro. Uh, it's it's been like straight up piss in that room, dog. But um, shout out to Sammy. And in, in sixth grade, I peed on myself, bro. I'll keep it real with y'all, dog. I was I was with Jessica. You remember Jessica? <laughs> so I had a crush on Jessica, dog. This is like sixth grade. And um, I was like, Yo, Miss Harvey, come on, I gotta, I gotta use the bathroom. But started like, You ain't going nowhere till you finish your work, boy. I said, come on, Miss Harvey, why you do that? Shut up, one eye. Teachers used to be real spicy back in the day, dog. What, what the fuck is one yeah, eye? Why do you call you one eye? Because I, when I get mad in, in sixth grade, I'll be like, man, come on, why you doing that all the time? Ah! So she said, shut up, one eye. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody in the class started getting their roll, getting their roll on, dog. Jarvis, you might have been slow, dog. <laughs> 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 Oh, some G shit, dog. You, you know, he talking about pissing on yourself, closing one eye when you mad, dog. You might have been slow, my dude. I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> you, dog, you sure now? <laughs> I'm starting to get worried about you, dog. Yo. Ooh. Yo, I got real life tears in my eyes, dog. Y'all gotta oh, chill, bro. Man, time out, dog. So, bruh. So I pissed on myself, bro, and I came back to the classroom. And there was like this piss on the um on the seat, and I looked at Jessica. I was like, damn man, I can't believe I spilled that Capri Sun all on the place, yo. Damn, it was in my pocket. You see that? And she's like, no, I didn't see that. <laughs> That's all I had, bro. <laughs> but a year later, I got her, so it don't matter. Seventh grade, I got her. Shout out to her. Shout out to Jessica, man. Shout out to you. Hey, y'all boys, y'all boys are on one tonight, dog. All right, let's get back, man. We, you know, we kind of veered off. I'm we're not slow. Of, we're going to have a lot of smoke after this podcast, dog. Y'all was, 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 was the original R. Kelly, dog. He was the original R. Kelly. <laughs> 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 Nigga, Jarvis made it cool, dog. Jarvis made it cool. We'll get in our bag, dog. If, if, a, if a chick pay you, never mind. I, I ain't getting to that. That's, we, we got, you know, what's that? Anyways, so we have a new <laughs> topic that we want to bring up. So we're going to start with 2010 and we're going to bring it all the way to 2000 to this year. And we're going to rank our top albums in a bracket from each year, starting with 2010. What's the best album in 2010, 2011, 20, we're going to go up to 2020. So all the, the, the albums that got the, um, won the championship in each bracket, we're going to do a new bracket and then see who's the winner of that one. The best right. album of the decade, basically. That's what the, the culmination will be, the best album of the decade. I like that. So we're going to start off with round one. This is the year 2010. Now, this one, I'm, I'm mad at this start, season. Before we start, I'm going right, to give a little honorable mention. Now, for those of you that don't know, go back and look at 2010, dog. That shit was a weak-ass fucking year for rap, dog. That shit was a weak year to me. But You just started uh, listening to rap music then, though. That's what you had first. <laughs> Brando told us, dog, last podcast. That's when you first listened. No, 2010, we were in college. Yeah, that's what you told us, dog. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Uh, but I, I only got two honorable mentions. <laughs> T.I. No Mercy. I mean, it wasn't one of his best albums, but I just felt like we should say something. See, and, this, is, this is me shaking my head no, because I'm a T.I. fan. No. I like No yeah, Mercy. No mercy for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool on that album. Um, and then the N.E.R.D., nothing album. Honorable mention, you know, it was cool, but just give a little, just give a little shout out. Okay, yeah, we, okay, nothing. Okay, I thought you said seeing sounds because I, I wouldn't got at you. You would say seeing no, sounds. Okay. No, no, 
I like seeing sound. That's a classic to me. All right. I don't like the seeding, dog. See, okay, so the first round matchup, Drew had. Let's just, go. Let's just start at the top. Pause. Yeah, my beautiful Dark Twisted yeah. Fantasy versus Last Train in Paris. This seeding is terrible because Last Train in Paris is a classic to me, bro. Classic? It's a classic album to me, bro. It's, it's Last Train to Paris is the most underrated album probably of the decade. Period. Now you can try to argue that if you want it to. Was, it was it was definitely before his time. Yeah. Like for sure. Like the sounds that he was utilizing in it. Um, you know, some of the subject matter. Cause hey, he gentlemen. was kind of like on his depressed type tip, like hey, gentlemen, with that album. Y'all right quick. We have Last Train to Paris versus My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Let's cut the shit. My no, beautiful we, no, we, stop. Stop. Ah! Stop. Bro, we all know what's gonna win. We just gotta give. We gotta highlight Ladies last train. Ladies and gentlemen, we have my beautiful dark twisted fantasy versus last train to Paris. Uh, we gotta give my some spotlight. Dark twisted fantasy oh, wins that round. Bro, we all know that's gonna win. We just gotta spotlight my last train to Paris, dog. It was a good yeah. album. It's, we gotta give it's it. very underrated. Good album. I like it. Not better than my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Of it's course not. Different. Of course next, not. Next round. Next round. No, 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 no. I want to highlight my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy before we move on. I think my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is the best produced rap album of all time. I don't think nothing, no rap album touches that production wise. Period. Uh, Lost the Throne? No. no. Really? I would say Dark Twisted Fantasy. I would I agree don't with think that. Lost the Throne is a better produced album than my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. It, now, Lost Throne's like top 10 produced rap albums of all time. But my, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is like on a whole nother level, bro. Hey, yeah. fellas, I, I'd be willing to debate that one, but we'll, that's for another podcast. All right. So the next match that we have, Pilot Talk versus Teflon. Pilot Talk is currency, right? Yeah. I'm going with Teflon Don. I think that's a classic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, shout out to Currency. Shout out to you. You know, <laughs> this is, like I said, this is the weak year. I had to throw something in there. So I think, I think. I think if I, if I was a Well, disrespect smoker, the currency, though. Shout out the currency on my Jarvis back. Shout out the currency. Shout out the currency, man. Um, I like you like currency as a rapper. Yeah, he, he's dope. He's dope. Well, he can spit, but. Yeah. I, and I think Smokers might have a different. When was um, Christian OJ released? Was that 2010? Yeah. 20, uh, somewhere, somewhere around there. That was 2009 or 2010. Somewhere around can't there. can't put that on the list, though, because it's a mixtape. It wasn't an album. It's an album. All right. So. The next we have recovery versus Flockavelli. Now th- this this is the this Let's is the get tough, it. This is a tough match. Oh, TTD just trained the ghost, Shotty. Flockavelli was way go, better shot it. recovery. Knock that shit off. Flockavelli for that time was much better than recovery, bro. I love. See, you about to make me sit on the album that I love. I love Flockavelli. Flocka. That energy, dog. The energy that Flocka brought to the rap game, like he got some hits on that album. That's, bro. A, that's a clap. Crazy. Hey, that's a classic uh, trap album, bro. It is. For it sure. is. No bullshit. It's really a classic trap album. It gets For you sure. hands down. And, and, and that, that's like, Flocka is like a lot of these dudes. Like, remember when Flocka first dropped? Everyone was like, oh, he was like one of the first dudes that really like took like a lot of L's in public. Like, oh, man, he's not a real rapper. He's yeah. a whack rapper. You go back to that Flocka Belly album, dog, like. Him and Soldier. Everybody thought him and Soldier Boy, and Soldier Boy was running uh, running shit at that time too. Uh, the Gucci Bandana track, yeah, brother. Uh, there was a lot of tracks that Soldier Boy was dropping during that time frame. Marco Polo, yeah, Marco. that joint was hard. Marco, Polo. Yeah. Marco, Polo. hey, and Bow Wow tried to get on his um OJ Juice Man flow, but it's all right. Yeah. Bow Wow. <laughs> Last oh, so night, girl, four, four heads going belly, right. Hand. I'm going Flocka Belly. Upset alert, Marco. Is that an upset? Recovery is dope, though, dog. You know, you know me. What we're talking about for the time frame. This is 2010. I'm going with recovery, dog. Over really? Recovery. recovery was dope, bro. And I, uh, I, I can go memories that. tied to recovery. Like that's when I was intern at ESPN in the summer of 2010. Like that album is a cla- is a. I wouldn't say it's a classic, but it's the it's the best Eminem album since Eminem show. Period. I don't like it, so I'll be. Transparent with y'all, I don't like Eminem. I'm not an Eminem fan, so. Mm-mm. I love Maybe. Eminem, dog. But, I mean, two out overrules one, so we got to go with Flock of Ellie. I'm eight. And side note, I'm kind of hurt, man. I was talking to my girl yesterday, and she says that Joe Bunn's music is trash. 
She was like, I don't see what you see in it. It's so whack. Like, I don't, I don't, I try to understand it, but I don't get it. That's another yeah, kind of t- and, this, and this is a sidebar. There were a lot of women that were commenting underneath the uh, Rick Ross clip from last week saying that they do not rock with Ross. It's not for them. They said it's not their cup of tea. I was surprised by that. That's surprising. That's very yeah. surprising. All I was right. surprised. So next up, we have Sir Lucius Leftfoot. That's the Big Boy album versus Thank Me Later. I'm going to go with Thank Me Later. Um, I'll be really apparent with y'all. I never – I listened to Sir well, Lucius Leftfoot like once. Was Andre, was Andre Three Stacks on that album? Like, no. was it was it Outkast or just Big Boy? Big Boy. Yeah, that's why nobody listened to him. Thank Me Later, nigga. Come on. Keep it moving. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Big boy, big boy can rap. No disrespect. Again, shout out to Big Boy. But uh, nah. <laughs> shout out to Big Boy. <laughs> we want the Outcast joint, my nigga. All right. So my beautiful dark twisted fantasy versus Teflon Don. Ooh, this is a now. This is an actual good matchup, bro. It's a it, it, it's a really. Good. Yeah, it should be a champ. It should be the championship, really. Hey, my beautiful man. dark twisted fantasy. Come on now. Dog, nah, Tef- Teflon Don got so many fucking hits, dog. Damn. But it don't it don't it don't match up. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got a bad drawing. My bad, Ross. You got a bad drawing, Ross. You sorry, I, I, So I picked Teflon Don in this. I, I like I think Teflon Don. Huh? Teflon Don is tough, bro. Are you ignorant, dog? I don't so I don't I personally don't think my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is Kanye's best album. I think bro, in college race would be like, hold on, I'm getting the microphone out. And college girls be like, man, listen, that my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. That that's that's like a war hall, man. That's that's beautiful art. I didn't. I ain't say that. Uh, I never said that. No, no, Dre said, ah, uh, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I've I've always I've always been transparent with y'all and told y'all that I believe Kanye's best album is Graduation. I I, I think that my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is very overhyped. So many classic verses, bro. Like uh, even like the the Chris Rock. On the end, like that's just hilarious. I can do without, I can do without it. What? Do I without can, it? I can do without uh, my. No, it's literally it's literally one of the best rap albums ever. I can do without it. You ignorant? Dude. It's, it's it's probably. Top I think gradu- I think graduation is way better than my beautiful dark twisted. That's fantasy. fine, but we're talking about Teflon Don versus my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. And I think me personally, I would choose Teflon Don over my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I don't think it's Violent. that great of an album that y'all are trying to hype it up to be. Now, Drew, after this pie is over, had that question in the story, like what what album do you prefer, my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy or Teflon Don? And we're gonna we're gonna let listeners. See I mean, it. I know most people most people are probably gonna choose my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I'm just talking about for me. Yeah, my bad person. taste. That's why, but it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we're, we're two out over rules one. Sorry. So next up, we have Flockavelli versus Thank Me Later. I'm going Flockavelli at this point. I'm going Flockavelli too. Yo, ho, 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 ho. What? Nigga, we get Drake's ass out the paint. Flockavelli over Thank Me Later. Flockavelli yeah. versus right. My Beautiful Dark Sister Fantasy. You talk about light up. You talking about fancy fireworks. Three no, songs. Was they, was they, that's it. That, that was his first album, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get it. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Yo, y'all are, no, are y'all telling me Flockabelli is in the look, Drew, oh, Drew, Drew, we get look, we look, we get thank me later. <laughs> <laughs> no, so y'all telling me Flockabelli's in the championship. Yeah. Oh my god. Right. No, I, I had too many classic nights like rolling out blasting Flockabelli. I had too many classic gym sessions listening to Flockabelli. Too many classic yeah. runs. No, listen that should make you want to rob somebody for real. No, like, like, no, <laughs> That's the type Stop. of energy, dog. The type of energy, dog. You get you hyped. But uh, all right, so championship, dog. Young but, money, brick squad. Young money, brick squad. Hey, young wasn't money, Grove Street young on that team? Money, young money, brick squad. Yeah. Young money, brick squad. Young money, brick squad. Brick squad. Brick squad. Brick squad. Brick squad. Let's go, Flocka. So Drew, so Drew, you really think that Thank Me Later is better than Flockavelli? Yes. Yes. And I love Flockabelli. I love it. Always have. Always will. No, this dude, this dude sees Drake. Drake is doing no wrong, dog. You're doing right now, dog. Thank All me. right. So we got Flock, Flockabelli versus My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy for the best album of 2010. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy wins that. Come on now. It is. 
No, it's beautiful. I, it's a, it's a, a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It is. Literally, literally. And shout out think- to Rob because Rob, when um, when my beautiful dark twisted fantasy first dropped, Rob was like, "Yo, I feel like Kanye's like on his like Michael Jackson thriller shit." And I said, "What do you mean by that?" He said, "I feel like he's just taking it." taking rap to a new level on this one. Like, this is something we never heard before. When I first heard it, I'm like, this, it was this new sounds, bro. I'm like, I didn't know what to think. I was like, I don't like this. But like, after listening to it over and over again, it's, it's beautiful, so, dog. So really quick, can I ask y'all a question? Do y'all really think that My Beautiful Dark Twist and Fantasy is a better produced album than Graduation and 808s and Heartbreak? Yes. <sighs> it's crazy. No, the, the attention to detail on Dark Tooth of Fantasy is crazy. Yeah. Like, the, the things that he went through just for a beat, like, duh, it's, it's more than people normal normal people would do. He's not just going to play a beat, layer it a couple times, all right, loop it, and it's done. No, 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 no. It's nothing like that, bro. <clears throat> I think production, production-wise, production Graduation and 808s and Heartbreaks are better than My Beautiful Dark Tooth of Fantasy. Like he, he, he uses his voice as an instrument on, what's that song? Have a toast for the douchebags. Have a toast for the act. Like, at the end of that song, like, that breakdown with the keys, and he's using his voice as an instrument, dog, is this, it's next level stuff to me. It's genius shit to me. Like, Kanye, every time Kanye releases the album, I would give it a listen just based off of my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Just have what a about little- Watch the Throne? Huh? What about Watch the Throne? With it's, a, it's a well-produced album, but it just doesn't touch my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I'm not taking oh, anything was from- it, um? Wasn't it all of the lights, or he had like thirty people featured, like thirty features? Yeah. He brought, oh, he brought, he brought like the most talented. He, I think he had like John Legend, Alicia Keys, somebody. No, I'm not I get that all, dog. Watch the Throne is a better produced album than my beautiful Dark Fantasy. No. Bro, y'all are tripping right now, it's bro. Great, but it's not. It's not next. Bro, level. y'all are tripping. Niggas in Paris, like. Lift off with Beyonce, bro. Welcome to the jungle. Who gonna stop me? Well, it's a great album. It's in my top five all time. Y'all Personal. are tripping right now, bro. Y'all are really tripping right now. They're saying it's based on production. No, no, no. And it's not to say that Watch the Throne has terrible production, but it's just not. Watch the Throne. Watch the Throne is the best produced rap album of all time. Wow. It is. Okay. You've been saying right. a while. And, and it might and it might arguably and it might arguably be the best rap album of all time. Who would y'all put? It's it, it, Mad City. It's better than Watch the Throne? Rap album wise, yes. No, y'all niggas cut the fucking cap right now. Y'all cut the cap, bruh. Y'all cut the cap. Y'all cut the cap. Cut the cap, bruh. For real, cut the cap. Y'all think Good Kid, Mad City is better than Watch the Throne? Yes, I think the Blueprint's better than Watch the Throne. I think Reasonable Doubt's better than Watch the Throne. Bruh, y'all, y'all are ridiculous right now. Y'all are really killing me right now. Bruh, this is hurting, dog. Watch the Throne is in my top, is in my top five favorite albums of all time. So I'm a, I agree with you about how great it is. It's not better than Good Kid, though, to me. What? Not better no, than Oh, no, y'all are tripping. You gonna put Watch oh. the Throne over Illmatic, too? Illmatic is probably number two. Might be 1A, 1B. I love Illmatic. Illmatic is one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, like we're talking about like some like... But Watch the Throne is better than Good Kid, Mad City, y'all. Y'all cut the... Y'all cut the concise... Like, think think about... Think about how... Dog, the concept, dog. How the songs... Watch the Throne, top to bottom, is better than Good Kid, Mad City, top to bottom. Stop the shit. Stop the shit. Both of y'all. You're wilding right now. All right, this is definitely going to be a clip. I want all of our fans to be in on this. I want y'all just to have, keep the same energy about Good Kid, Mad City being a better rap album than Watch the Throne. I, I guarantee you. I think the people are going to kill you in the comments. I don't think so. I think, I think you'll get laughed. Matter of fact, I think you're going to be laughed out of the comments. Okay. That's what I think, personally. I think, over, I think, over, over Watch the Throne. I think Blueprint's better than Watch the Throne, and I think Black Album's better than Watch the Throne. The Black Album better than Watch the Throne? Yeah, it might, or it might, be, it might be equal, but yeah. Y'all stop. And, and, and reasonable doubt. I think, shit, American Gangsta might be a tie with Washington Brown. Okay, bro. I got it. Y'all are really crazy right now, bro. 
Uh, what about 444? You think 444 is better than Watch the Throne? No, no, no. no. I, I, I ain't going there. I should watch the throne. I was, I'm just asking. I'm asking what you're like I'm, I'm like not going there. I do like the Carter's album, though. I, I haven't like, listened to it. Replay value, is, replay value is huge in my book when it comes to – Watch the Throne has the best replay value out of all those albums that we just named. Not good kid. Not good kid. Not to shit. me. Shit. You play niggas in Paris right now in the club, that shit still jumps. Y'all crazy right now. No, we're talking you about play that. Otis right now. You play Otis right now. It's still going to pop. I never we're heard nobody play Otis. We're talking about before. who had the biggest hits. We're talking about the best album. Time out. Time out. What, what, what club you know is going to play Otis? No, I said, I said you play Otis right now. It's still going to pop. You play niggas in Paris, brother. Everybody's going to go crazy in the club over there. Okay. Niggas, the is better than- replay value. That has to do with replay value. Watch the Throne has better replay value than Good Kid, Mad City. We'll, we'll ask the people in the comments. I think you. I think you're definitely bugging. So what? What? What do you do in the comments? The Rick Ross Teflon Don versus um My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and also what's the no? Better- well, that, I said that's my personal preference. That's just me. But I think that Watch the Throne is a better album than Good Kid, Mad City. No, we'll post it. We'll post it. Yeah. So. And you know Hayes is gonna kill you, Jarvis, for that. What I say? If, if Hayes if Hayes catches the Good Kid, Mad City, better being better than Watch the Throne, you know he's coming for your neck on that. Shout yeah. out to Hayes. Hey, I'll call Hayes right now. Put him on on the pod. Call, call him. Put him on the pod. Put him on the pod. Call Hayes right now, dog. Can y'all hear him? Yeah. This is Jarvis Goodman. From the off work podcast. <laughs> He'll pick up. Oh, he whack. That's crazy. Could have been our first phone in guest. Yeah, he would have been. Seven, five. Ah! All right, all right now, boy. <laughs> you reach seven, five, seven. Put all his gov. But we don't, we don't, hey, we definitely got to holler at Hayes about that. And uh, he don't pick up this time. We'll we'll bring him on next episode and call him in. All Who right. Think, who do you think Brando would say? Mm, I don't know. He's a whole fan, so. Shit, BS. Like, I'm about to call BS. Bro, I can't believe this, bro. I really can't believe y'all said that Good Kid, Mad City is better than Watch the Throne. That's crazy to me. That's that's really it's wild. A better, it's a better rap album, no? That's crazy to me, bro. That's crazy to me. Yo, this is um, Jay Good calling from the Off Work Podcast, bro. I got a question. What's going on, man? It's Biash the nicest. Hey, um, shout out to you, Biash. What's good with you? Glad to be here. Shout out to the fellas. What's up? Shout out to the Ash and Hayes Podcast, bro. Shout out to the Ash and Hayes Podcast. I'm going to talk about that on the next segment, about what they, what they got going on. But um, this is Biash. So, yes, Biash, Jarrell says, and now you're a big Jay-Z fan, right? That's correct. All right. I'm a hip hop fan though. Like, don't thank you. you know. Thank you, Ash. thank you, thank you, uh, B Ash. Appreciate that. Yeah. But go ahead. Like, I'm not just like an avid, you know, I listen to different types of shit. I listen to all sorts of music, but if uh, what is the Jay Z versus Nas, is that what we doing? No, 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 no. That's played out. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we're asking, Jarrell thinks Watch the Throne is a better rap album than Good Kid Mad City. And we want to call Hayes, call but Hayes ain't pick up. Got you. Watch the throne. Uh, Good Kid, Mad City, to me, me personally, is more of a classic than Watch the Throne is. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think so. I just because of the fact that it's it's Kendrick's, you know, first album, and it has such a like you don't really skip any tracks on. Good Kid, Mad City. No skippers. And Watch the Throne has no skippers know, either. What are y'all talking about? Theatrics, too. What'd you say, Drell? I said, Watch the Throne has no skippers either. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know what? I, I think that you can argue the point, but if I had to choose, because it's like, you know, that, that's a Jay-Z and Kanye West album. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, it, it shouldn't have any skippable joints. But Good Kid, Mad City, how many, does, does that have any features on it? Yeah, it has Drake, like J Rock, J Rock, Drake, J Rock, Drake, uh, Drake. on it. It's like, it's like, that's Kendrick's album. You know what I'm saying? Like his debut album. Like that's his, like, that, that's probably his go to. Like, do you have a favorite Kendrick album? Uh, Section 80. 
section. Okay, okay. Well, that's like a – that was before Good Kid, Mad City, right? It te- technically, mm-hmm. Section 80 is his first album, if we want to get technical. But most people say Good Kid, yeah. Mad City. Good Kid, Mad City is, 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 is um, his commercial. debut, his commercial debut. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, his commercial debut. I fuck with I fucked with uh, Section 80, too, though. Like, that was, that was one of my favorite ones, too. But if I had to pick – if I'm in the car or something like that and I'm, I'm about to drive somewhere or – you know, I'm doing something. I'm probably gonna like. I can't remember the last time I listened to uh, Watch the Throne for real. That's crazy. That's wild. I can't bro. recall it. I can't recall it. I can recall listening to like. I be running through like Kendrick shit. I be listening to Damn in the car. I be listening to certain tracks off the Pimple Butterfly, and I be listening to um. What else? Yeah, Section 80 gets in rotation, too. But Good Kid, Mad City, definitely, like, yeah. I'm, thank you. Thank you, my brother. We, we appreciate you for calling in to, uh, for answering our phone call. Of course, for the show. of course, man. Um, you wanna, before you get out of here, you want to plug anything you got going on, B.S., before we get you um, out of here? There's a, there's a lot on the horizon, man, for all of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of different shit coming. Um, Shirtless Winter Volume 1 is on the way. Uh, that's about to be very, very crazy. Y'all are going to enjoy that. Everybody's going to enjoy it. But uh, just be on the lookout. There's different stuff with the podcast popping. There's different stuff all over the place, man. There's a whole lot of stuff coming. Just be on the lookout. Hey, man, we appreciate it, dog. We love you, bro. Stay yes, safe sir. out there. Wear a mask, man. All right? Yes, sir. Y'all too. Love y'all boys too, man. All right. Peace. All right, bro. All right, yo. Yeah, bro. I, I disagree with y'all, man. We're gonna see what else. I disagree. So now, but, we hey, look, 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 we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see in the comment section. Yeah. So we're gonna now, now we're gonna move on to the um what you've been on section. I'm gonna start it off, dog. So what I've been on. So I watched a movie on Netflix with Jason Mitchell. It's called Mudbound. Have y'all seen that? I heard about it. I ain't seen it. That sad movie, bro. Like that's like I legit. This is the dude that got canceled, right? Yeah. He got what? Canceled. Canceled? Yes, dude from the shot that like was sexually harassing um people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog, Easy. but that he played E Z E. Yeah. Dog, like that movie was kind of it kind of showed me that just like we talked about, dog, that's wasted talent right there. Like he could act as that. Like in the in the movie, like he was a great actor, bro. And um, <laughs> but it, it's a it's a sad ending, bro. Like I, I cried tears, I ain't gonna lie. A tear came down my face. Um, so that's what I've been on as far as music, bro. Dave East album. I started it um, earlier and the, the intro was hard and his flow is kind of different. So I'm getting it. I like it though. And um, Nas. Nas dropping King's Disease album Friday. Um, the song I'm going to pick is Ultra Black. <laughs> it's hard, bro. Um, and also, uh, I just want to, before I get out, I was listening to the Ash and Hapes podcast. B. Ash just called us. And they're starting a um, podcast network called um, Clearly Podcast Network, CPN. So if you are a listener and you live, like, in the Hampton, Virginia area, like, holla at Hayes. And he said he can, like, um, produce your podcast, edit it, everything you need. They have, like, real horrible packages. So um, I know when we first started this podcast, Hayes was one of the first people that I talked to about like how to navigate this. So um, if, you, if you're in Hampton, you're, you're in Virginia, like definitely holler at him. Cause he, he's letting you guys use his equipment too, to shoot the podcast and the, the equipment is quality. So if you're um, in that area, like look at, look up clearly podcast network. It's on Instagram. So holler at Hayes for that. If you want to get all your podcast needs in um, one um, stop, one shop stop hub whatever so yeah one stop one stop shop shop. one stop shop hub it's okay bro it's It's getting late it's getting late but yeah bro uh so what i've been on uh is y'all already know my boy dropped the album last week you know what i'm saying it's young dog it's dog you feel me hey drew it's dog the (laughs) the best rapper in memphis you tripping, money the bag. Best rapper in Memphis. Money bag, dog. He's still beefing with homeboy, right? I know they was talking on the Breakfast Club. Black like youngster. Black youngster. Black youngster. Yeah, he yeah. beefing with black. I like black youngster too, but it's dog. All right, big dog. 
So I've been listening to, to the Dolph album. That joint is tough. That joint's fire, bro. I need for y'all to go ahead and check that out, bro. Um, oh, but Jarvis, you didn't give us a single for the week. But we'll go, we'll go back to you. Ultra Black. Yeah, Ultra oh, Black. We did? Oh, okay. My fault, my fault. I was um, a Doja Cat. <laughs> hey, Doja Cat was hurt by that, too. She went on Instagram, dog, and, and said, why is Nas doing this to me? Like, why, did he, why is he dissing me? I don't like it. Doja Cat, you know what you did. Knock that shit off. Anyways, um, Dolph dropped an album. I rock with that joint. I did hear the Dave East project. I'm still uh, going through that and, and combing through that. So, uh, but my my uh, song of the week is gonna be "To Be Honest" by Young Dolph. That joint is tough. So y'all check that out. To be honest, all right. right. For me, so I checked out the new Jamie Foxx movie Project Power on Netflix. I ain't see that yet. It was Yo, good. that joint. I it fucked with it. That joint. That joint is dope to me. Yeah. Um, definitely check that out. Um, what about the yeah, five bloods? That shit was it was good. I mean, it was, it was all right. <clears throat> but like, I mean, yeah. Jarvis like, Power, nigga, Jarvis like the nigga that was going crazy in the five bloods, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the, never seen the movie. Never seen dog. it, bro. <laughs> never seen the movie, duh. That's I don't know. You still ain't seen it. No. Come on, is that, Come is, on, that the, is that the Vietnam movie? Yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna watch that. I'm good on that. No, it's a Spike T joint. What you mean? A Spike T. <laughs> <laughs> Spike Lee. Spike Lee. No, I got no. It, it wasn't a Spike T joint. You feel me? <laughs> no, I've been watching Tiana Taylor videos, dog. That shit stuck in my head. All right, but go ahead, dog. My fault. I mean to cut you off. No, you good. Uh, but yeah, Project Power. Definitely check that joint out. I saw. I thought that shit was tough. Uh, definitely a good movie. Good watch. Uh, in terms of music, uh, listen to the Burner Boy album. That joint is tough. Yeah. Uh, his last album was tough. This joint is tough. Like, definitely check that out. Um, if you're into that type of music, you know, that vibe, um, you know, definitely give you what you need um, in terms of that. But you already know the track. Don't say, come on. Drake. Don't say Drake, dog. You already know the track, dog. Baby. <laughs> Baby. Come on, dog. Laugh now, cry later. Ducky, yo. You are. I'm going I'm to beat it over your heads. Pause. Hey. Come on. Hey. Oh. Oh. Yo. <laughs> Watch. Watch your mouth, son. <laughs> Y'all don't have nothing over my head, dog. I'm good on that. <laughs> but yeah, dog. You got, I got to go. Hey, come on. Now. Hey, yo, man. Pause, man. Hey, yo. Pause, yo. <laughs> uh, Watch but yeah, your mouth. Dog. Yeah, that's that's all I got, man. Watch your mouth. Hey, so really quick, really quick predictions, predictions, predictions. Who we got in the NBA Finals? The Nuggets. The, <laughs> the Nuggets? And the Celtics, dog. You really saying the Nuggets and Celtics? No, you're bullshit. Yeah, I like the Nuggets, dog. I like the Nuggets. All, all right, right, Drew, who you got? Who you got? Who you got? I'm going to go... I'm gonna go with the classic, Lakers Celtics, dog. That's what I, I want to see. The same thing. I was thinking the same thing. I want to see it, dog. I want to see it reimagined. Even, even though the Celtics did just lose Gordon Hayward for four weeks, but uh, they, they'll be all right. They, no, they J- J- Jalen Brown right now, bro, is like my. I wouldn't say my favorite player in the league, but my favorite player to watch. I love to watch him play, bro. Like this, the the way. I don't know. This, this, oh, this nigga's a Blazers fan. Nigga just forgot all about Dane. I, I know Dave, Dave's my favorite player in the league. Like, he won me over with that. But my favorite player to watch, because, like, when I watch a Dave, I'm, I'm too nervous. I'm like, I'm a Blazers fan. I can't really appreciate his game. But since I'm not a Celtics fan, I just, I just watch um, Jalen Brown. There's, like, no nervousness. I can, like, watch his game on both ends and, like, really, like, relax. And um, I, 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 I love his game, to be honest with you. J- Jalen Brown tore this last night, man. So I'm a Sixers fan, man. Uh, it might, it might be, it might be about time, Jarrell. It might, it might be about time. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think Embiid and Simmons are a good tandem. I think they're good individually, but I don't, I don't know how they work together per se. The we, we got some bad, we got some bad contracts on our hands right now, dog. No, trade Ben, trade Ben, get, get a, you know, get a good haul for him. You still got Tybal, still got Embiid, like you still got pieces. Just. It's just I don't think I don't think it's gonna work, man. I, to be honest with you, I think they're gonna end up trading Embiid rather than Ben, but because you, you get more in return, you get more in return for Embiid. 
And B does so much, though, bro. Yeah, I know, man. It's that's both ends of, that's both ends of the floor. You you giving up a great it's impact. Man. It's heartbreaking, man. It is. It's, it's even Markel Foles, dog, had a solid. The Magic won today, dog. Markel Foles had a good game, dog. Shut up, dog. Just shut up, okay? And y'all could have drafted Jason Tatum. Missed out on him. And we could have drafted Christoph Porzingis. And we could have drafted Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, I know. I know, dog. You don't have to remind me. I know. It hurt, I, I cried. I cried silently in my bedroom, dog, last night, dog, after we lost our playoff game. My boy's a Nuggets fan. He was like, dog. We, he said they traded away Donovan Mitchell. They did on draft night. And he said they could have had Rudy Gobert too. I didn't know. And, that. They, and they traded away Nurkic. Yeah, I remember that because your Nurkic and Jokic were playing together. Yeah, they they, they weren't a good match together anyway. That was Nurkic been hooping, dog. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I, hey, I gotta get out of here. I gotta watch the Blazers game. So whether you're watching us, if you're at work or you're off work, we appreciate it. All right?